Today we'll do some HTML and JavaScript development, some website front end development, very basic to show you how to create some visualizations like maps and points on the map from Fiware context broker data that we've imported in previous videos. We're working with the Fiware context broker, which is an API for configure for deploying smart model data for your smart devices. And we're actually going to update that and create website front end content together. And I'll show you how to do it. Even if you're not already a website developer who knows HTML and JavaScript, you can still follow along in the text editor and, and do this together. So let me show you. Uh, I'll start off by showing you our data, which is deployed in, let's see, we have a, we have an OpenShift local environment running here and I can access the console right here. And we have a deployment called Orion LD, which is our context broker and it has a route. And if I go to slash V2 slash entities, you'll see that we have some water consumption observed data. I want to put one more thing on there. So I'm going to go to my issues where I've defined these for our upcoming hackathon at Red Hat. It's github.com slash rh dash impact and projects and Fiware EMEA 2023. I'll go to this import water observed smart data model task and take this example data here, example payload, copy that to clipboard and then in the task, it tells me to create this file. So I do vim, paste that path, put in the data, close that, and then run this command, curl command, rest API command to import that smart model data. And it says it's created. So now we should have two objects instead of just one which we do, here's the second object, and they both have a location field. So this is gonna be important because we're gonna use that location field to plot it on the map. Now, to the software development. You can use the terminal, you can use the text editor. I'm gonna use the code, uh, Red Hat Code Ready Studio. That's my favorite tool for developing code. And I have a temp project that I'm going to put this new file into. So I'll just call it map-results.htm. And here we go. We'll get started. So every HTML these days, every web page should start off with a tag called doc type. Uh, HTML, that's pretty standard. And then we'll start off the HTML tag and inside of here, we will put lang, language equals en for English and style equals height 100%. Why do I do height 100%? It makes it so that you can put a background image for your whole site that scales to the side of your, the browser window, which is kind of cool. But <laughs> not that we're going to use that in this example, perhaps, but I just do that. So there's two sections called head and body. So I create elements like this. Now let's start off with the head because this is the important part. We're going to give it a title called map results and this will show up on the tab in the browser it'll say map results that's the title of the page and then meta char set equals utf8 which is a good thing to add 
for the character set. Oops, I have a mistake here. That's why I use a an IDE like Code Ready Studio so that it shows me that. And then meta name equals viewport and content equals width equals device dash width initial comma initial dash scale equals one. This helps with mobile friendliness of the site. And then we're gonna include some style and my favorite style library is called W3CSS. It's a good standard um, if you don't already have one to use. So I will link it in here with rel link rel equals quote style sheet quote space href equals and the path to it is the url to it is https slash slash www dot wait i put too many www dot w3 schools dot com slash w3 css Actually, I might as well show you where this comes from. W3 CSS. We'll just give it a quick search. And yeah. So we'll just copy that whole tag. Well, I'll keep that href anyway. Put it here. Okay. And then close that link. And then add a script tag. So this is, we want to load jQuery because it's very useful. jQuery CDN. Um, let's just go with unified. This should work just fine. And then let's get one more, which is a graphing open source graphing tool called Plotly. So Plotly JS, it is. So let's find the link for it. Let's do plotly.js CDN, Content Delivery Network. So the link is here. They put it in the head as well. So that should get us in good shape. Um, okay, so that's good for a second. Let's add a little bit of body so that we have something to see. We'll do body um, class equals w3 light gray. That's a w3 CSS class. Style equals quote height 100%. And then inside the body, let's just make an h1 tag that says app results. And then a div to store our graph. ID equals page graph and class equals W3 content. To put it not all the way stretched out across the page, but a nice readable distance across the page. Uh, HTM body graph as another class. And then we'll close that div. IDE did it for me. Now we can load this in the browser now. All right. So we got that. Um, I'm going to put it right here. 
Found not found. Oh, <laughs> that's not the right path. This is the full path. Here we go. All right, we have a very basic page. Let's see, I think we could do class equals w3 text green. And that'll turn it green if we want. All right, that's a w3 CSS class. Now we'll write some JavaScript to interact with our Fiverr context broker REST API. This will be fun. We'll create a new script tag and inside of here, we will create a function, Fiware graph API request as a parameter. Now we need to make an Ajax request. So we do Java some jQuery dollar dot Ajax. And in here we'll do data type colon JSON. URL is HTTP colon slash slash. Ryan dash ld fireware app oh dot apps dot no dot apps dash crc dot testing slash e2 entities oops that doesn't belong there that belongs there and this goes on the next line. All right. Type is get and cross domain true. Uh, there's more secure ways of uh, contacting an external service through REST APIs, but we're actually going to en enable cores on our 5R context brokers so that this will be allowed. I haven't done that yet, but we're going to do that soon. So I'm just putting in this in for now and you'll see it fail because I always like to show things fail. <laughs> it's good. Function. Data, comma, text, status. Okay, in the case that this request fails, we will console.log data. And in the case that it's done, We will do our fancy graphing. We create a var for data, which is a which is an array of items to put on the map. Var layout equals an open object, a new object, and then layout show legend will be true layout drag mode equals zoom layout ui revision equals true Layout map box equals, and we'll add some style here. Oh, 
the style of the map is OpenStreetMap, so it's actually going to use the service OpenStreetMap to load the map. And we're going to center it on a certain latitude and longitude in Europe, 55 uh, latitude 55.61888, longitude of 13.548799. And a zoom of one so that you see the whole world and where the points are on the world, you can zoom way in um, on a particular location if you want. And now layout margin equals, there's kind of a big margin by default. So I'm gonna set it to zero on the right. 30 pixels on the top, zero on the bottom, and zero on the left. Trace. This is another part of Plotly. We had trace, show legend equals true. Whoops. That looks better. Trace, oops, type equals scatter map box. Another style attribute for the plot. Bar colors equals empty list or empty array. Bar lat equals an empty list. Bar lawn equals empty list bar text equals empty list. We're going to populate a color, a latitude, a longitude, and a text for each of these smart model data elements in the API. Now we do entities dot for each. Entities is the, the JSON payload that came back from the request. So if you look at our request here, you'll see that it's an array of JSON objects. So we're going to iterate on each of those entities in there for each record equal, well, that thing. <laughs> Can you see this? I want to make sure you can, so I'll make it bigger. Var location, we're gonna grab the location from record dot location. If there is a location, then we will go and plot it. var location parts equals location dot value dot coordinates. Now, if you look at our API, you'll see that it has a location value coordinates. That's where this comes from, location value coordinates. var t equals type plus record dot type. This is where we're populating text to show for each point on the map. T equals, we'll add the ID, plus equals ID colon plus record dot ID. Here's the type, here's the ID. Plus a line break. Text dot push T. Lat dot push parse float 
location parts zero. The first one is latitude. The second one is longitude. So that gets parts one. Colors dot push. We'll make them all red. Okay, we're getting close. Outside of the four each, we do trace marker equals color colors. The size of the dot will be 10. Data dot push trace and plotly dot react page graph is defined here it's the id of this div page graph comma data comma layout that we've all defined previously now all we have to do is call this in our script so we do some jquery on the document dot ready when the page is ready we will call this function to call the fireware graph method uh, function. So we made it reusable. Okay, should we see if it works? Let's see if we made any mistakes. Oh, apparently we did. Actually, I think I know what the problem is. Let's look at the console. Oh, syntax error, expected expression, line 42. 42. T, oops, I did equals plus equals, so that's a mistake. Cross origin request blocked. Oh, okay. So by default, the context broker will be deployed without cores enabled. So let's check out Orion LD cores and see. I think it's this documentation here. Let's check cores. No, that's not it. Core support for Orion Context Broker. Um, no, it's in GitHub. <laughs> I should have looked this up beforehand. Or read the docs. Cores. No, that's not it. We're going to have to find the docker container and Orion LD. Um, Uh, okay, so I think it's Docker, probably in this guide, of course. Here it is. <laughs> okay. Just see what this says. Cores. It tells us to set this environment variable to all. So if I go into our OpenShift environment, I'm going to go to administrator, workloads, deployments, Ryan LD, and I can update it here. So add an environment variable. Um, where was that? Set it to underscore underscore all. All right, so we save. Let's watch the pods redeploy. So it's going to tear down one pod after it creates another pod as part of a rolling deployment. 
So this is going to fail until the new pod gets deployed. Let's check the events. Let's check the logs of this pod here. Okay, that looks good. Let's see if it has our, yeah, it's got our NLD cores allowed origin. So we just need Um, did that restart? Scaling to one. There we go, 559, and it's got the allowed origin. So let's see if this works now. Um, we'll go to map results, refresh the page. Okay, good, although I spelled something wrong. <laughs> Entities, this just needs an I right here. <gasps> yeah, okay. Although I don't see our point on the map, <laughs> but we do have a map. That looks cool. Um, let me see here. We'll do the debugger and go into our code right here. And refresh. Let's look at the location parts, minus four. I feel like we're definitely missing something. Let me try some other data that I've imported before in NA Hackathon, an EV charging station. So we want to create this file. Oh, in fact, it already exists. So then let's Put this into the API and it says oh NTT min link. So we need to put the ID in here, which would be ID and the type back. So I was practicing with this one. Let's 
post it. It's created. Let's see if that shows up in our map results. It doesn't. So we have something else <laughs> going on wrong. Um, Now, I have another version of this in source fireware hackathon static htm graph results. Now, that one's graphing. <laughs> so, let me just do a quick diff of these two things meld uh, local src fireware hackathon 2023 static stm graph results and uh, local temp where is that one let's check our file here it's in home, local SRC temp. Okay, local SRC temp map results.htm. Find what I'm doing wrong. Oh, I left these lines out. Sorry, folks. Trace lat equals lat, trace lon equals lon, trace text equals text. And if we go back to our results, there they are. Cool. And you can hover over them and see the type and the ID and the coordinates. Water observe, EV charging station, water consumption observe. Okay, so thanks for sticking with me through this. I know it's kind of a long video, but I hope it was worth it to learn a little um, user interface, um, website development, and JavaScript, and HTML, and about a little bit about cores and enabling cores in your application, although there's more secure ways to do it and putting that all together for a successful dashboard in your application. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more information about smart data and smart devices. There's going to be a lot more coming up.